Today we're talking door locks. I've got two uh, quick set 910 door locks or the deadbolt door locks that uh, have the keypad on them. And they've been working well for a number of years now. They integrate through uh, Home Assistant or integrate to Home Assistant through Z-Wave. And it's been flawless except for the occasional uh, lack of reporting from the lock. And it's just because it's battery powered, I'm not sure what it does. It is an older lock. It's been on the doors for a few years now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace one of those locks with a new one. Ultralock has uh, been kind enough to send me one of these U-Bolt Pro Z-Wave locks. This is one of their newer locks. They have some different types of locks, but this is their Z-Wave lock. And this would be a direct comparison to the Quickset 910 that I'm currently running. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it installed. We're going to pair it up and make sure it pairs up to Home Assistant. That'll be a test. And I'll run through some of the features and uh, whatnot of the lock and let you know what I think of it. So let's get started by installing the lock. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put on this deadbolt here. So that's just going to go in the same deadbolt spot that we had before. Make sure the right way is up. It just fits right on the slot. If you already have a deadbolt in there, then this will be easy as pie. And I've already got pre-existing screws, so we'll just screw those in here. Hold that in place. Just in tight. Okay, deadbolt's in. As you can see there, we've got our deadbolt in. And now we will put this in. And here is, this is the, um, the outside part of the lock that we're gonna put on now. So let's go ahead and just stick that on. So you can see that. Okay, we'll stick, stick that through and make sure that the wire goes through as well. Because the wire will attach on the inside. Just kind of hold that for now. Once you have that in place, the mounting plate goes on the inside. Put your wire through. And it says up here. So you can make sure you get that in the up position. Again, installation is not hard on this lock. Once you have the plate on, then you take the door handle or the door link, make sure it's in the unlocked position here. So it's unlocked, which you can't maybe see there. And you also notice that this little thing is across the top here. So that's the matching the little dent or the little dimple that's on top of the metal piece there for the deadbolt. We're gonna plug in the uh, power connector or the connector here. And then we're going to slide that over the door. Make sure it's unlocked. Okay. And then we have two screws, which we will put on here now. One here. And one here. Okay. And now, if everything works as it's supposed to, you'll now see that you have the deadbolt here opening and closing. And now the door is locked. Now the door is open. And that's as simple as it is to install. Now we're going to get it all programmed up. Okay, so now we need to add this to uh, our phone, get the app. So get into the Play Store or whatever phone device you have and search for UTEC. It'll find the UTEC app. And go ahead and install it. And now you're gonna to need to create an account. I'm gonna put all my personal information in here, all right? And then after you do that, you'll get a little tour of the location access, location stuff. So you need to add a location if you want. And after that, after the tour is over, you need to allow this so it can find nearby locks. And then you're gonna get an upgrade notice. 
if you have people on V1 in your setup here and you this is now V2, they won't be able to share the locks between V1 and V2. You can read all about this, but essentially you need to upgrade everything to V2. And then you can dismiss this once you read it. And now what we want to do is add a device. So when we click on add a device, it'll find the Z-Wave lock because it's nearby because you clicked allow. First, you'll give it a location if you want to do that. And then there's the U-Belt Z-Wave. Click on it, create an admin code four to eight digits. And this is something that tells it it's no longer a factory reset device. So give it an admin code, click on next. And now you want to give it a name. Um, I called it backdoor. You can also just click backdoor or push backdoor on the deal there. And then after that, click on next. It'll ask you if you want to um, add a door sensor. I'm not adding a door sensor because, oh, actually, it'll ask you which direction your lock is, and then you verify which direction your lock is actually sitting. And it turns it the right way. Now I say door sensor no to that because I'm going to use Hope Assistant for the door sensors. And now we can connect to a Z-Wave hub. Now keep in mind that the screens I'm about to show you will differ depending on the Z-Wave hub that you are using. I'm using Z-Wave JS to MQTT on my Home Assistant setup. And those are the screens that you're going to see in this screen recording. So if you have something else, it may look a little bit different. Just make sure you're following the inclusion process as it states in the application or the app that you're gonna use here. You can't use the lock with your home assistant or anything like that unless you pair it with the Z-Wave hub first. You can use the lock and the app without pairing it with the Z-Wave uh, hub right now if you wanna do that. Okay, so now we're gonna click on add Z-Wave or add to Z-Wave hub. And it's gonna take us to the screen that says, do not start the inclusion on this app until you have started the inclusion on the home assistant app or your Z-Wave hub. So we're going to go over to the Z-Wave hub and we're going to start the inclusion over there first before we do it here. So we'll go down to Z-Wave JS to MQTT. Let that load up. Go to manage or actions, manage nodes, start inclusion here. So click on next after that. Give it a name if you want. Otherwise, just click next. I'm going to call it backdoor lock here. or backdoor lock two, because I have a backdoor lock. All right, next, and we're gonna leave it as S2 default. And we're gonna go back now over to the UTEC app, and we're going to click on start inclusion there. So starting inclusion, connecting to the hub. It says here, do not switch back to this app until the pairing is successful. So if you go away from this app, don't come back to it until it's done. So we're gonna back to the Home Assistant app, and we're gonna take a look and see what pairing is doing there. All right, it's done part of it. We're gonna click next. It's looking for a code now. This code is on the back side of the battery cover in the lock. So open the battery cover of the lock and then look for the six digit code or five digit code and type that in here. Click on next. And now it's going to connect finally. And now it's got it added node 58, which is the next node in my list with S2 access control. And that's the control that you're using for uh, security for the lock. So it is a secure device added to Home Assistant. Okay, we've got our lock installed on the door. We've got our lock paired with Z-Wave to our Home Assistant using Z-Wave JS to MQTT. So now let's go ahead and check out and see if it's here. So I'm gonna hit the C key, go to developer tools, and I'm going to search for that U-Bolt lock and you can see it here. I'm just going to click on any of these things here. That's fine right there. Go to related. It tells you it's the integration of Z-Wave JS and the U-Bolt Pro Z-Wave Smart Lock is the device. So if we click here, then we see all of the sensors and everything associated with the lock. So right now we have our status of our lock. We can unlock that or lock it if it's unlocked already. We have um, node status is alive, so it tells us what it's doing. Battery level is 100% and low battery level is not, um, it's normal, which means it's not in a low battery state. And then you can look at some other stuff here in terms of the status and what kind of security it's on. So remember, locks you wanna have on high security. So this paired up with S2 access control, which is the latest highest security Z-Wave stuff and Z-Wave plus version two. And that means that it also 
should be faster to respond. My old quick set locks were not that fast when they were responding. If I click this right now, I'm gonna listen. Um, in fact, let me go over here first before we do that. And I'm going to set the dashboard here to, to use that new lock. So we'll go to this dash here. We're gonna edit it because I have a backdoor lock. That backdoor lock is actually my old backdoor lock, my quick set. So I need to edit this and change the entity on the lock itself. So that is down here under back door lock. Way down here somewhere. So here's the front door lock, here's my back door lock. So I'm gonna change this to lock U Bolt Pro ZUA Smart Lock, okay? That's all I have to do to change the lock. If you're changing out locks, this is easy if you have it already in your dashboard. So I'm done with that, done with that. Now this is the lock that is the new U-Bolt lock. Just click on it and listen, and it's already open. And it should return an open and turn red here as soon as it verifies that it's actually open. And there it is. So it responds fast and then it reports back fast. One of the issues I had with my quick set locks is that they didn't always report whenever the state changed. So they have it respond fast because it's an S2 device and to report fast, which I just locked it, is very nice. So getting it into Z-Wave, into Home Assistant is super easy. So um, a couple of points about the lock. Number one, the lock is smaller than the, the quick set. It's easier to get into to replace the batteries, in my opinion. It also looks nicer because it's not this massive looking thing where the the quick set was and it pairs easily with z-wave in the quick sets there were three or four times it would try and try and wouldn't work and sometimes it worked um, with the s2 stuff i paired it and i paired it across the house by the way i didn't have my hub right next to it like in some of the older z-wave stuff you have to have the hub almost right on top of the device or it won't pair i did it from across the house and i did it through the z-wave mesh network i didn't even there are things between the hub and that lock and it's still paired with no problem. So that's a plus on the lock as well. The lock has a number of features um, that I've played with and we'll get into those next here. All right, so we're in the UTEC app and we're just gonna go to the door, uh, the door lock that we're working on, which is our new back door lock. And you can see that it's locked. If I just push the button here, it's gonna unlock it. It's doing this right now over Bluetooth. This is not done over Z-Wave. Z-Wave I control from uh, the Home Assistant app, which is where I will primarily use this from. I won't use this app as much, but if you're not using Z-Wave and you wanna control it directly, or you can't get to your Home Assistant or whatever, you can use this app. So we'll go ahead and lock the door. You can set up users. Here's different users, and you can change things like you can add the fingerprints. Uh, you can give app access, or you can set a passcode. So you can set the passcode for each user. And then of course you can add fingerprints by touching the fingerprint uh, sensor on the outside of the door, just like you do on your phones these days. You just kind of train the fingerprint. And it looks like you can add more than one fingerprint. You can add additional users, either as an admin, normal user, or a temporary user. And it tells you the types here. Uh, admin can always unlock via code, fingerprint, or UTEC app can add or delete or normal and temporary users. Normal users can always unlock via the code, fingerprint, or the app. And then temporaries can unlock via code, fingerprint, or app within scheduled time. So if you have someone that comes and does something in your house, a contractor or somebody who works in the house or walks a dog or whatever, you can set a temporary user that way. All right, and so if we go back over here to settings, there's all kinds of different settings. You can get your device info, name, model, serial number, etc. Uh, you can switch your location to something else. If you have more than one location for your locks, you can do that. Your battery, you can turn on or off the lock sounds. I don't want lock sounds on. It's too much noise. Smart notifications, you can enable those uh, through your app if you want to know when things are happening. I get that through Home Assistant now, so I don't need to worry about that. Lock mode can be normal or lockout. You can lock out the, the use of codes or fingerprints if you're going to be away. Auto lock is defaulted to on. It will automatically lock after so many seconds if it's left unlocked. I'm gonna leave that off for now because someone could get locked out when they're outside, when they're in the backyard, for example. 
Uh, that might be something good for your main primary door where you're not going to be um, coming and going or being outside a lot. That might be good. Uh, auto unlock is also disabled. You can set auto unlock. If you walk up with your phone, uh, you can set a geofence with GPS and it will automatically unlock the doors when you get close if you want to do that. You can also do that in Home Assistant. Uh, Magic Shake also allows you to shake the phone to unlock your door as well. That is off for me right now. And then if your lock is backwards, you can change the, the direction the lock spins. So if you have it wrong, you can fix that after the fact. And then you can see that my Z-Wave is paired and my bridge is unpaired. Um, you can set up a bridge where you can control the lock no matter where you're at if you don't have some other smart home thing like Home Assistant running. You can control it remotely and you'd have to buy that bridge separately. And then of course the door sensor you would pair if you were using a door sensor, which I am not because I use Home Assistant for that. So those are, oh, and you also get a log of all the things that have happened in the door. Uh, you can see if anybody tried to unlock it here uh, with the fingerprint and all that jazz. So. Lots of cool features with the door. This is a full feature lock with an app that works within Home Assistant uh, or works standalone as well as within Home Assistant. So you can pair it with your Z-Wave stuff and you can also pair it um, or run it directly from the app with just the app features. So if you don't have a whole smart home ecosystem, it doesn't mean you can't use this lock. You can still use the lock and eventually if you want to add Z-Wave or something else, then you can have the lock and be ready to go with that. The really neat thing about this lock, in addition to um, the features that it has on it and the fact that it's quieter, it's a little smaller footprint, it looks better on the door, it's Z-Wave right out of the box with S2 security, it's fast. Those are all some great features. For you, in addition to those features, if you use my product code, my link down below in the description, you will get $20 off on this lock. So if you want to try out the, you, uh, the Ultra Lock, the Z-Wave Lock, Go ahead and click that link in the description and jump on over and um, get this lock for yourself and get it installed. I think it's a great lock. Um, I like the idea of fingerprint stuff because we're all used to that now with our phones if you use that. And you have the ability to use the lock um, with a code as well. Oh, and one other thing I didn't talk about is the code allows you to set an obf obfuscated. You could set a really long code, but within that code is your actual code. So you can create a code that helps um, or that kind of blocks it if someone's watching over your shoulder. You can push a whole bunch of buttons on there. It looks like you're just pushing everything, but really it's your code, but it's blocked out with a whole bunch of other numbers. Obfuscated, I can't even say the word, but it's um, and your code is hidden in all the stuff that you're typing. So that's another security feature of the lock. If someone's peering over your shoulder, they can't see the code because you're typing in all kinds of things that are not actually the code just to kind of block out what they can see. So that's a cool thing with the lock. All right, that's gonna do it for the Ultralock U-Bolt Pro Z-Wave Smart Deadbolt that I just installed and went through with y'all. If you have any questions about the lock, the installation or anything I've talked about in the video, just put those down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those. Remember to use the uh, code in the description if you wanna save some money on the lock. I think these are gonna be great locks. I've seen a lot of good things about them. They feel, it feels like a significant, decent, uh, well-made lock uh, over the next year or so. We'll see how it performs, but for now, I think it's going to do well. I'm excited to put it to use. So we'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching.